Today, I wanna to talk about something huge, something so massive and fundamental to cooking, I'm actually a little bit nervous to get into it. I wanna talk about the egg yolk. No, not the whole egg. Are you kidding me? I couldn't possibly talk about the yolk and the white at the same time. What do you think I am? Some kind of genius, a wizard? I'm just a guy, a guy who loves egg yolks. Let's get into it. Crack open an egg and toss it back and forth between the broken shell halves. Or crack an egg and put it into your claw-like hand. Or crack an egg directly into a bowl and just grab the yolk. Whatever you do, however you like to do it, just get your hands on that yolk. Just look at that beautiful sunny orb. The color of an egg yolk is due to pigments called xanthophylls. And that is impacted by what the hen eats. Alfalfa and yellow corn will provide more of that yellow color pigment than say wheat or barley will. Everyone loves a deep orange egg yolk. But here's the thing, you can add stuff like marigold petals to achieve that. Chef Dan Barber actually produced a red egg yolk by feeding his hens peppers. So the bottom line here is that deep golden orangey yolks is not always a great indicator of an excellent hen diet. Enough about color, who's ready for some stats? A yolk is made up about 50% water, 34% fat, and 16% protein. Just by those numbers alone, 100 grams of egg yolks looks an awful lot like 100 grams of camembert cheese. Seriously, the yolk is rich and packed with protein. It's also loaded with a veritable alphabet of vitamins, including A, B6, B12, D, E, and K. But most importantly, it's a powerhouse ingredient in the kitchen. So let's go there. It's hard to find a recipe where yolks impress as much as they do in a batch of mayonnaise. So let's make some. I'm gonna start with a tall glass and my immersion blender. I'm adding some lemon juice, a little salt, and an egg yolk. Then I just pop on the blender and pour in vegetable oil. Then let it rip. You can see gorgeous creamy white mayonnaise form instantly underneath that blender. Man, that looks good. Try that without an egg yolk though, and it doesn't look so good. This broken, un mayonnaise -y kind of mess. The blender is doing a lot of work here. It's breaking that oil into tiny droplets that are then dispersed throughout the small amount of water in the mix. But what's keeping those oil droplets separated from one another and making our mayonnaise possible are a few emulsifying substances found in the yolk, most notably lecithin. Lecithin plays well with both fat and water, so it arranges itself around those droplets of oil, preventing them from finding each other and linking up. Thanks, Lecithin. Egg yolks are also key to so many awesome cooked applications. So I'm talking about butterscotch pudding, pasta carbonara, lemon curd, custardy ice cream, creme brulee, the list goes on and on. In each of these dishes, the yolk proteins are dispersed throughout a liquid. As the temperature climbs, the proteins bond and trap water, forming a gel. If you stir while this happens, as we do with an ice cream base, the result will be creamy. But if you leave it alone, like we do with creme brulee, you'll have a luscious set solid. That velvety yolk thickened texture is pretty hard to resist. And here's a really cool bit. You can use a lot of yolks for a lot of that nice velvety thickening without the food tasting eggy. How's that possible? Well, it turns out that the sulfurous compounds that are responsible for that eggy flavor, they're all found in the white. Get out of here, white. It's not your turn. Speaking of getting rid of the white, I think we all know the main reason that you put a fried egg on top of your burger, a grain bowl, avocado toast. Are people still, are you guys, people still eating avocado toast? Yeah, okay. on your avocado toast is not the white. It's the nice runny yolk. So why cook the whole egg? If you're a true die-hard runny yolk fan, you can actually ditch the whites entirely and make yourself a squeeze bottle of runny yolk sauce, a la Egg Yolk Whiz Kid Tim Chin. Seriously, and this is how you do it. Just separate your yolks, pass them through a strainer, season with a little bit of salt, and then cook them sous vide at 149 degrees Fahrenheit for 32 minutes. Your yolks are pasteurized, perfectly runny, and waiting in your fridge for you to make all of your food that much better. And this is how to eat. Wait a minute, I'm not even close to done. Remember when I said that a yolk's composition isn't that far off from cheese? Well, with salt and a little bit of time, we can turn it into something very close to cheese indeed. You separate your yolks, you bury them in a bed of kosher salt and sugar, wait about a week, and then rinse them and then briefly dry them in the oven. Your salt cured yolks are then ready to be grated just like a hunk of Parmesan cheese on top of steaks, pasta, grilled vegetables, you name it. They add tons of savory richness. And if you incorporate things like black pepper or bonito flakes into that salt and sugar mixture, you can make yolks that have great spice and tons of umami depth. But salt and sugar isn't the only thing you can use to cure yolks. You can also use soy sauce for something that's fudgy and just set on the outside, but still runny inside. We even have a recipe for salted caramel cured egg yolks that are awesome on top of a scoop of ice cream. Ice cream that was made with egg yolks. Oh man, there's really only one way to end this, isn't there? Here's a scoop of custardy, yolk thickened vanilla ice cream. I'll drop the yolk in the center of that scoop, grab a spoon, break the yolk, and this is definitely how to eat egg yolks. 
Are you impressed that I didn't once say the yolks on you? Do you still eat avocado toast? All right, well, let me know in the comments below. And don't forget, all of these yolky recipes are available in the video description below. See you next time.